So here we go. I had promised a video on how to put a head on one of these little guys. So that's what we're going to do. A few things you're going to need. Rubber cement. And then package of balloons. Your color, your choice of colors. Um, I just got white ones because they look more like a drum skin. Uh, goat skin when they're on. So they'll look kind of like this. Anyway, uh, same jeweler's wire. This is just a real soft wire. It holds its shape real well when you do anything. It doesn't spring back or anything. And then, uh, of course, some string. This is, uh, uh, what's five yards of each of five colors. So I get choice of what I put on the rings and what I use to string it and everything. Um, scissors, maybe a pick of some kind, and some wire cutters. So the uh, putting the head on itself is actually relatively simple. You're going to take a light coating of the uh, rubber cement, which is not exactly agreeable stuff, right around the rim. And then grab a balloon and blow it up. Just like so. Alright, so on the end of the balloon there's that uh, hard part where the tip of the rubber, where the silicone or whatever it is that they're made of, is uh, the rubber's thicker. So I avoid that, but just off to the side of that, take the drum, just touch it up against it so that it leaves a ring of the rubber cement on there, and then give it a minute to dry. Uh, <clears throat> so after letting it set long enough that the uh, rubber cement's tacky and not wet, which this still needs a minute, I think. Anyway, this may or may not work because it's still a little wet. If not, I'll go back and do it over and push the drum into the balloon like that and then slowly let the air out. And if all went well, when we cut this off of here, Nice tight drum head. I think I cut that enough. I'm going to cut a little bit more. There you go. So you got technically you could cut that off at the rim and that's it. It's headed. It'll work. Um, however, if you want to make it look like a gym bay, you have to go a little bit further. So, that's where the wire comes in. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an inner ring. I'm going to do that with a rubber band. This is going to be like representing the flesh ring. I want to put it on there and get it you know, reasonably even, like so. And then we're going to take the excess I don't want it quite so tight around the top when I put this back over. Anyway, you pull that back up. Just like you would if you were skinning a real drum. Comes back up. And then comes the wire. Now, if I could find my solder, I would probably do this a little different, but I can't find my solder. I have a solder in iron and no solder. And I didn't pick any up when I was in town the other day. So you go around it twice and overlap by about, I don't know, half inch, centimeter, something like that. And since I don't have solder, I'm going to do it this way which the ones I've posted pictures of on the uh, 
page, on the Facebook page, uh, that's the way these were done. Anyway, you get it to where it's about the right size. And then I just twist one side into the other and work it all the way around it and just keep doing it until you've got it fairly solid. Like so. And then the other one is going to go around this way. You gotta move the two ends in opposite directions or it doesn't work. Alright, so there's your top ring. We're going to test that for fit by pulling our balloon up the room, at least most of it, and yeah, that fits pretty decently. You want a little bit of space because you're about to tie a whole bunch of uh, cradles on it and it's still got to fit when you do that, but you don't want so much that it's going to slide past the rubber band that is underneath the balloon. So there we go. So now onto this. I think I'm going to do my rings in black. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to measure out enough to go around the ring once. And there's two, and three, and four, and then a good chunk of change, almost five. Now where your two wires are overlapped a little bit, that's where I put the first loop. So you put the two ends together and make a loop like so, and then Put them through there, put the two ends through the loop, and pull it up until the loop tightens. Loop tightens down on the wires. At the crossing points. Am I on the crossing points? Yes, I am. Pull that nice and tight. It would, in fact, be a good idea at this point to put a drop of glue right here. And somewhere around here I have a glue bottle. <clears throat> there we go. And that'll keep that from coming undone while you're working on the rest of it. I use tacky glue for this kind of thing because it sets up real fast and it tacks instantly, makes it sticky instantly. So. All right. If you've tied rings before, then you already know how to do this part. And it works just the same way as with the big drums. If you haven't, then I'm going to zoom in and let you see this as closely as I can possibly do. Whoop, let's zoom in, not out. And... Okay. This does... If, if my hands move off screen, you'll understand I don't have much, doesn't take much to do that. So, this went under and then back over. So, we're going to go under and back through itself. There's your first half of your next knot. And then I grab it. I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch worth of knot should be enough. Now it's going to go over and back through itself. And that should tie a nice little cradle right next to the first one. And then you just repeat that process until you have about maybe two inches of string left. And then you go to the other side and do it again. Go in the other direction, so it's really easy to confuse yourself on which way the knots go when you change directions, though. And there we have 
two cradles, three knots. So I'm going to finish up this side. I'll come back for a second when I get started on this other side, okay? Okay, so I'm about halfway around the ring and I got a little over two inches of string left on that side. So now I'm going to flip this puppy over and I'm going to work back this away. But now my loops are on top. My, the loops of the knots are on top instead of on bottom. So I'm going to start by going over the top, back under and through. Just the opposite of what I did before because I've changed directions. That's just the way it works. Then on the second half of the knot, I go up under and back through. And there we go. We got the little loop on top. You just have to remember to reverse yourself when you uh, start to, when you switch directions. Otherwise, you you get the loops facing in opposite directions on opposite halves of the thing, and it looks kind of funky. And we don't want funky. We want good. So once again, I'm going to finish tying this, and then when I get to the end where I'll tie the two ends together, I'll come back and show you that. And my camera's not focusing real well, is it? All right, so I've got my knots tied up and I got room for one more right here, but I'm gonna use both ends to do that. I'm gonna do half of uh, half of each side of the knot with, with this. There's a, on a real djembe, whoop, let me see if I can get over here, there we go. On a real djembe, there's a real fancy knot that goes here. Uh, well, I say real fancy, it's just a lot harder to tie and it can be done with this. But it's kind of hard to explain, and for purposes of simplicity, we're going to do this a different way So than what I do on a real djembe. So first you act like you're going to tie the uh, knot, and you do the first half, but from going from each direction. So one's going that way, and then this one is going that way, so that both of these come out the same way. And then all you do is tie those two uh, together right here with a square knot. And I'm sorry about my big old hands getting in the way. My sister is constantly amazed at the size of my hands, but you know, that's just the way I, it is, I guess. I don't think I have big hands. Don't mind me rambling. All right. <clears throat> so there you have your top ring. Let me back out here. These days I'll learn what forward and reverse is. Okay, so there's our strings. We don't need the tails here. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch hanging out there. Okay. And then we can take our little head here. You know, pull the excess. No, maybe I'll just get rid of some of that excess. I don't need that much to do this. I do need some excess on them. But not that much, I guess. So. We just start putting them on there. If it's good and tight, that's what we want. Yes. Okay. And then you can go around and pull up your excess. Now, I have not figured out a way yet with these um, to do the flap over design, which is where this comes down and get it to stay that way. Of course, you know, it's it's a balloon. It doesn't work like leather. Um, but it would be kind of neat if you could figure out a way to do that. So, for our purposes, we're going to leave this excess on there until we've got the verticals on. And then we will uh, uh, snip it off right above the ring. So, as of now, it looks very much like a headed uh, jimbe with a top ring. So now we'll do the bottom ring. It works the same way as the top one. You're going to take your uh, 
wire and wrap around it twice. Nice and carefully. And leave a little extra. And you want to do it right at the notch that I leave right there. And then on this particular one, and this is kind of like just a matter of which shell you get, but the ring won't fit over this once you tie the uh, uh, knots onto it because of where this is at. And sometimes they're that way, sometimes they're not. I really don't uh, try to make them all one way or the other. It's just a matter of what looks best when I'm turning the uh, drums. So it is possible, and I will show you, to go ahead and twist your ring up while it's on the drum uh, so that you don't have to worry about taking it back off and you can tie it and everything on the drum. This is something that happens with the big drums too. So that's why I don't really concern myself with it too much. If I can find the other end, there it is. You know what? Glasses help. Okay. There we go. And back under. All right, another trick to make these so they don't, it'll want to slide and change size. And one of the ways you can stop that from happening, well, one way is to solder it, which is literally to make the ring without, but not twist it, and then actually solder uh, the two rings together that you've made with the wire. You still want two loops, uh, but if you soldered that whole thing, it, it would hold forever. Um, however, with this, we can do the same thing with the craft glue. I didn't do this on the top one, but on this bottom one, I'm going to go ahead and do that. You try to keep it off of the drum, but that doesn't always happen. And it doesn't have to be through the whole ring, but if you give it several places where it's grabbing, and especially at the ends here, um, then you will not have near as much trouble uh, tying the knots onto it. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to let this set up for a few minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to tie the uh, cradle knots with a ring still on the drum. It's a little trickier than tying the others, but not that bad. Alright, see you in a few minutes. My time, a few seconds, yours. Okay, our glue's all set up on our ring, and uh, that should keep it from unraveling as we're working on this. So we're going to start with another bit of string. Okay, so start off the same way, you make the loop and then pass the loop through and put the two ends through it and still, even though it's glued, I'm going to do it at the joint where the wire ends to kind of pinch that part. Okay, so before you tie the knots on this, you have to know 
how many knots you have on your top one. So you find your knot that is your start and end, which is right here, and count them. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we got fourteen. <clears throat> Now we get to go ahead and make the same number of knots on the bottom. And this pretty much works the same way as the top one, but you're having to work with the drum inside of the ring. Uh, if you have one of the ones where you do it. If, if you can slip the ring on and off the bottom without, uh, without it um, catching, then you don't have to do it this way. So keep in mind, since we're putting the same number on top and bottom and the bottom ring smaller, that the um, spacing between the knots is going to be shorter. But not a whole lot shorter, okay? So let's see if we can zoom in on that a bit. So there's our first two. And then we're just going to keep working with that one string until we have it, until we have 14 knots. Again, I apologize for my hands being in the way, but really not another way to do this. I'm trying to keep them out of the way as much as possible, but. All right, you just continue around like that, and once you've got it, uh, once you've used up all but you know an uh, inch or two of this, basically once you're to the halfway point, then you start on this one, go back the other way, remembering to reverse your pattern so that you keep your little loops on the same side. It's not focusing. There we go. So, all right, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so he's all got the rings on him and we got the uh, uh, cradles all tied. So now I'm going to line up the knots here and here. <clears throat> and this is my piece to string it with. So I'm going to take these two ends and put them down through two of the loops. Oops, that wasn't a loop. Helps if you kind of fold them loops out where you can get to them. One through there. And one through there. Oh, by the way, this string is measured out this distance times two and then times the number of uh, knots. So, in this case, I probably put an extra four or five uh, lengths on it, but just make sure you got plenty of string. You don't want to run out in the middle of this because it means take it off and starting over. All right, so now we can put you go through two separate loops up here, and down here you're going to go both ends through the same loop, <clears throat> making sure to keep your knots lined up. By the way, this is easier if you have a needle of some sort, like a big fat one like you use for leather, uh, and you can use it to do the stringing. Uh, if you don't, you can take a very fine wire, make a loop, and twist it together, and clip the end so that it's kind of like a needle, and that should also work. And that is what I'm going to use because I can't find my needle. Where did I put my little homemade needle? Here it is. All right, so that through there, and then you go through the next one over with one end.
making sure that it doesn't tie itself in a knot in the process. And then up through the same side, the same loop that you came down through for that side. So you get this kind of a look. And then down through the next one. And then down through the same one you came up through. And then over to the next. And you keep doing that until you run out of string. And then you go the other way with the other half of the string. Try to keep your uh, loops straight as you do it, or your rings, I mean, straight on the drum body. And that'll make things easier at the end, so you don't have to loosen it in one place and tighten another to get them even. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, laced up and then I'll come back and show you how to end it off. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so I got it all strung up, all laced, if you will. So what I'm gonna do now is come around and tighten everything up a little bit. And remember, this is only a balloon with a rubber band inside, so you can pull too hard and, and pull the rings together, and, and that's not good. Um, but if you just do it gently, you should be able to uh, snug it up and make it look a little bit nicer. Just working your way around. Sometimes you'll have to uh, pull both directions, but you know, it's all a matter of just being patient. Um, actually, a pair of tweezers would be a real good thing for this part. You can grab the ropes a little easier. <clears throat> But now that I've done a couple, I've gotten fairly good at it, so. That and years of stringing the big ones makes a big difference. Alright, and back the other way. All right, so now you've got this tail, and you want... Okay, so far I've been doing these to act as a uh, keychain or to hang it from the rearview mirror in your car or to attach to a zipper on your drum bag, something like that. Um, so I've left the strings coming out the top, and uh, the reason for that is because then you can make a little loop. You tie a square knot. 
like so. And actually I did that a little bit bad backwards. Pardon me. You tie a loop using a square knot. Or better yet. Send one end of it back around itself. Back around some of the ropes. Or down through the loop or something like that. Leave the other end loose there. And there's where your square knot goes. And you want to leave enough to hook on your keychain or uh, pendant necklace or whatever you're doing hanging up there. Then tie your square knot there. And then there's this nice little weave pattern you can do where you just keep going around one side and back around the other and pulling it up tight. Hope that's on camera. There we go. Okay. There's actually a name for this braid. I don't know what it is, so it just looks neat. So after you've done that for a little ways, then you can bring it around and put it back through itself and that ties it off. Again, tweezers would be nice at this point, but since I don't have tweezers in here. There you go. Now to keep it from coming untied, I'm going to put a little drop of glue big fan of stopping strings from coming loose with a little dab of glue. Okay, so now we have it's all tied and all we have to do is get rid of this excess uh, uh, balloon which we can do with scissors. Start a hole above the drum head and then work your way down just above the top ring. Not the sharpest scissors. I wonder if I have a better pair here. Hold on just a moment. Here we go. I was having better luck with these before. Still not the best of scissors. And there you go. Cut off our excess string. And there he is. All ready to hang up 
or tie onto a keychain or around a necklace or whatever. And it is actually playable. Okay, so it's not much to say here, but still. <laughs> All right, well, y'all have a nice day. Hope you enjoy the ones you get. Oh, if you're watching this on my Side of the Drum Guy uh, YouTube page, uh, channel, uh, you can go to Facebook, look up Side of the Drum Guy, and actually sell these little shells. I sell two inch ones and three inch ones. They're one inch heads on the two inch ones and inch and a half heads on the three inch ones. Uh, this one's actually kind of an oddball. It's a two and a half inch, which I don't actually make anymore. I just uh, decided to go with the uh, uh, two inch and three inch tall ones. So, anyway, have fun.